Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What's going on fourth grade and welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 15. Guess what? I uh, actually started filming this already, but I forgot to press the record for my face to be shown. But thank goodness because I was using my Okio Cam S so I was able to catch the audio of me recording. For problem number one, I'm gonna go ahead and just let the audio play from the Okio Cam. Thank goodness for that. I love my Okio Cam, by the way. It has made this series a game changer. So I'm gonna use the audio from the Okio Cam as I solve out number one. And then when we get to number two, you'll see me come back with my face, all right? Don't forget that you need your worksheet for this one. So if you don't have your worksheet, there should be a link below that will take you to a place where you can download the the worksheet that you need for this episode and the other episodes in this Math FSA fourth grade boot camp series. So get your worksheet, get your brain turned on, go ahead and solve number one and number two on your own. You're gonna come back, you're gonna hear me explaining it with my fabulous Okio Cam, which by the way, every student needs an Okio Cam in their lives, which is why I created a whole episode dedicated just to all the reasons of why students and teachers need an Okio Cam. So check that out too. Um, so go ahead, pause the video, solve it out. Longest intro ever. I will see you guys. You'll see my face at number two, all right? Welcome back. All right, let's get to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is identify the question type. I see one, two, three, four answer choices. So what kind of question is this? It is a multiple choice question. Yes, it is. Now let's go ahead and read it and mark it up. Which equation, <laughs> equation, I love that word, means that it has an equal sign. And look, equal, 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 equal. So they are equations because they have equal signs. Which equation does not, ooh, let's make sure we pay attention to that. Which one does not show a way to represent seven eighths? Oh, and I'm looking at this question right here and I'm seeing that these fractions have apparently been decomposed. We've stretched them out. We've broken them down. Okay, these are, this is decomposing fractions here. We're breaking them down and adding them up. So I know that when I add or subtract, my denoms must match, my denominators must match. And then I use addition or subtraction in the numerator, yeah man. So I'm going to use addition in the numerator and my denom slides across, okay? So two plus five, does that equal seven? Yes, it does. 
And then our denominator slides across. Yes, it does. All right. So this one works, but we want to know which one does not show away. This one does show away. So we can eliminate A because it's true. We're looking for the one that is false. We have our denominator sliding across. That looks good here. Going to use addition in the numerator. Yeah, man. We have one plus one is... 2 and 2 plus 1 is 3 and 3 plus 4 is 7, right? So this is true, which means that we can do what? Eliminate it. Let's look at C. Our denominator slides across. That looks good. Now let's add our numerators. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is seven and that is true so what can we do with choice c as well eliminate and so you know what we're not even gonna look at d we'll just mark it because that seems like a smart thing to do no it doesn't we have to add it up let's make sure here so our denominator is gonna slide across that looks good one plus one is two two plus one is three three plus one is four four plus one is Five. Five plus one is six. Six plus one is seven. Seven plus one is eight. No, this is false because when we add it up, it is eight eights. So that's the one that we want. Ding, ding, ding. And I could be a little bit better, but my bubble there. There you go. Nice and dark. Okay. Let's take a look at number two. All right, everybody. Here I am for number two. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Who said no? Oh my goodness, huh. you missed me. I know you did. <laughs> anyway, okay, um, for number two, before we even get started, I wanted to let you know something that, because if you're watching, especially if you're watching this in class, because it's truly tearing up my heart that I can't be with you physically in the classroom. Like, but this, I promise you, we are going to make number two an awesome example to solve together okay it's gonna feel like we're almost even like right there in the classroom together okay so without further ado with number two here we go here we go one more time da, 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 da. okay so we have i started marking it up already because this is where i realized i wasn't recording my face let's read it again though it says lance and jc spend time recording songs boop stop don't forget that this is a gridded response type, so jot that down. All right, back to the question. Lance and JC spend time recording songs. Lance spends three and four sixths hours recording his vocals. JC spends two and five sixths recording his vocals, hours recording his vocals. I'm sorry. Um, notice I put MN right there, and I'm also going to put it right here because these are mixed numbers. They're a whole number and a fraction whole number and a fraction. When you have a whole number and a fraction and you put them together, it's called a mixed number because it's kind of mixed up. How much more time, ooh, how much more time in hours does Lance spend recording his vocals? All right, so we know that Lance, he spends three and four sixths. We know that JC spends two and five sixths. And we know that Lance, because he spends three and some, he spends more time. So how much more? That means that we're going to be comparing the amounts, which means that we need to subtract them. So we have three and four sixths minus two and five sixths. When we subtract this, we will know how much more time Lance spends recording. First, I've got three. I could do three minus two, but I'm taking a look at these fractions here and I see four sixths minus five sixths and you can't really take away five from four well you can in middle school well you'll get to that in middle school but right now no so what we need to do is regroup what we're gonna do is take one from the three so take one bye 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 and it becomes a two and then we're going to add six to the numerator because we're taking one hole here and giving it to the numerator why do we add six? Because it takes six whole parts to make a whole. We're taking a whole and giving a whole. All right. And now we can rewrite it. So now we have two 
and ten sixths, which looks really funky, but we still gotta giddy up and finish this. So well, it'll it'll even itself out in a minute. All right, so now we can do two minus two, which is what? Zero, and ten sixths minus five sixths is what? Five sixths. That's right. Okay, we're not gonna write zero and five sixths. We're just gonna write five sixths into here. So it would be five sixths hours. That's the hardest fraction for me to say. And I like to write it over here. This is your fraction bar right there. But if your teacher has you writing it like this, six slash five, that's okay too. Whatever your teacher tells you to do with these, follow your teacher's lead, okay? I would tell my students to do it this way but either way is correct. The only thing that will mess this up is if you do it randomly in the middle, like five slash six, the computer that's grading your test is not gonna know what to do with that. Pick a side and make it work, okay? All right, fourth grade, that was super fun. I love, love, love. I just feel like we're working together in the classroom. It's so, I don't know what this is. I feel like we're working in the classroom together and it's so fun. Um. Okay, so if you know that you need some more practice with adding and subtracting fractions, mixed numbers, fractions greater than one, the first stop I want you to make is to McCarthy Math 155. You're gonna check out unit seven. That's all about adding and subtracting fractions, just like we did in this episode. Now, you should see a link below to click that will take you to my website where you can access the videos for McCarthy Math 155. Now you do need to become a member in order to see these videos, but anybody can get a seven day free trial. You should clearly see where to sign up for a free trial on my website. So check that out. Um, up, 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 up. The next link that I'd like you to pay attention to is to the how to pass the math FSA video for the standard that we worked on today. The how to pass the math FSA series was something I created several years back when the FSA was a computer based test. It's not anymore, it's a paper-based test, so you use your paper and your pencil, and therefore the problems and the style of questioning looks just a little bit different, so just keep that in mind as you're working through this program. But still great questions and totally something that you should check out for some more practice. You can also follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. That way you can stay in the know with everything that I'm releasing. And I'm also here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you are watching on YouTube, can you please go ahead and smash that like button? Why you ask? Not really for me, but for the mission that I'm on. You see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, to make it click and to make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders as possible. So when you click that like button, it will attract more students to my videos and therefore I will be able to help them with math, which is what I love to do. So thank you so much for clicking that like button because you are helping out so many students just by clicking that like button. Thank you so much. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video and finally before we go I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose that's right you are the ones that we have been waiting for so find your light and shine it bright watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place when you have the choice and you always have the choice choose kindness and I will see you all on the next episode